Are you bored, lacking inspiration, or just running out of time when it comes to making sausages? Then look no further. Our friends over at Leonard's Ingredients have you covered. With over 40 years of experience, trusted and loved by thousands of butchers baked from wide. Not only do they have a massive range of off-the-shelf complete sausage and burger mixes, dry glazes and coating, they have 40 plus gluten-free flavors. But wait, there's more. You can also create your own bespoke blend with a wide range of custom sizes, from 200 grams up to 10 kilo bags, with guaranteed flavor in every meal. Not only do Leonard save you time and money, but also space for your drive store. The development process is incredibly simple, and the minimum order quantity is just 30 kilos. Have a product that's unique to you. Call 01825 760 262. That's 01825 760 262. Or email info at leonards.co.uk to get the process started. Leonard's Ingredients, family run company with four decades of service and experience. Shop local, shop Leonard's. The following program is rated TV MAL. It contains strong language and is intended only for mature audiences. Welcome back to another episode of the Butcher's Bible Podcast. I'm your host, Luke. And I'm your guest host, Doug. We're just two blokes preaching the good word of the meat industry. One episode at a time. Nice. How are you? I'm good. Sorry you've got me again, but obviously Ant has gone missing in the middle of a cornfield, wouldn't it? I think so, yeah. There's a bright light and he just disappeared. So we'll see. We'll see. <sighs> Knowing him, he'll enjoy the probing, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> He will. Uh, who have we got on today, Doug? So we are joined today by Lucy Sheffield and James Robson of JNR Sheffield Turkeys. Hello. Hi. Thank you for coming on. Thank Thanks you for having us. We appreciate it. We know it's way past your bedtime. But, uh... Way past my bedtime, not so much here. <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> If you so to... would you guys like to plug and promote and tell us who you are? You're the salesman. Oh, yeah. You're the born salesman. Born salesman. Yeah. Okay, so we're at JNR Sheffield Turkeys. Um, we rear 6,000 Christmas turkeys and just over 500 geese, all for the Christmas market. Wow. Um, we were established in 1950. 50. So you're... Not by us. <laughs> I was going to say, you guys are great. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we're third generation. We're third generation. Um, and farmer and all is still very much at the helm. Um, and we just told a lot behind him, didn't we? Yeah, we're really behind him. Uh, but, well, just a big team, really. You know, mm. um, couldn't do it without him, you know. I suppose we're probably what you'd class as a traditionally family run farm. Yeah. Wouldn't yeah. You? yeah. 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 So oh, it's yeah. my grandfather and then dad then hopefully we'll be well us um mm. and we have got juniors snapping at our heels but they got to go off and do their own life and then maybe come back if they fancy it yeah yeah that's what we we push for that don't we yeah yeah i think they've got to go away to come back to the farm with different ideas different experiences mm. i think if you come straight onto the farm you become a bit into institutionalized that. into well they've always done yeah. it like this so let's do it like that yeah um yeah. i don't think you and i having done the different careers that we did to get to here have brought different ideas to the farm yeah it's no different to you know you being in your 20s versus you being in your 30s um and your perspective change and your friendship groups change and your whole life changes in a very short period of time so we yeah. think it's really important uh, to go and get life experience to then come back if that's what you want to do and we are super keen on the next generation if it's what they want to do not Brilliant. necessarily because you've got feel obligated to do it. Yeah. Yeah. And we're we're incredibly lucky that Barbara Law, Barbara, 
is very open to new ideas, isn't he? Yeah, he probably pretty, more yeah. so now. Yeah, in his eighties. Yeah, um, than he may have been in his sixties. Yeah, for example, you know. So right. you know, we we come with a an idea, and he'll be like, "Well, yeah, run with that," or he'll go away for a few days and think, "I like that," but what if we did it like this, so to speak? Because you take his seventy-five years worth of experience in rearing turkeys or whatever. And then you sort of thrash it out together, don't we? Yeah. So then we've got the poultry side and then the arable side. Arable side, yeah. So we're 115 hectares, uh, of which we grow in rotation winter wheat, winter barley, and spring peas. Very cool. Um, we also make hay for Arthur. horse customers. And we also have a bit more diversification on the farm in that we have five let units as well. Um, just when your dad gave up cattle, yeah, nine in the eighties, uh, late eighties, late eighties, um, early nineties. Those buildings became semi redundant, didn't they? And it was sort of thought, well, it was just when um, farms were starting to realise that they could make an income from diversification. So dad took again the initiative and kind of led in that respect mm. and turned them into let units. So we've got. Um, uh, oak. We've got oak frame building. We've got an antique dealer. Antique dealer. Quite varied. Yeah, I think the most varied is um, we've oh, got a guy, guy that makes speakers for nightclubs. Very and, cool. Wow. Like, I mean, it sounds like it sounds like somewhere I live because my the place where I live is very similar of a farm that's been utilized in other ways. And evolved. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Very cool. And I think that's one of the great adaptions of farming. We can evolve. Mm -hmm. Um. Farmers are quite good at that. Yeah, I think if you look at most modern farms nowadays, or any farm, it's had to have elements of a, of diversification. Um, yeah. Probably the biggest one you guys would have seen is farm shops or yeah. on yeah. Farm butchers or whatever. That's big um, time. You know, we, you know, we've discussed the possibility of mm -hmm. doing that here, but we probably wouldn't have the footfall, so to speak. But mm -hmm. you have a middle farm, Doug, you know, with yeah, yeah. 27 running past your door, so to speak. So, um, you know, yeah, every farm, I think, to survive well, well, has to diversify. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. the old adage of, well, we always do what we've always done. You're always going to get what you've always got. It's got to change because farms are, you know, these farmers... And people open to a change and adaption are going to survive. People that are a bit stuck in their ways, unfortunately, might fall by. I don't even know if that's farmers. I think that's business, isn't it? It is yeah. business. It's similar yeah. to butchers as well. Very much similar. Yeah. 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 You look at a counter that you guys or your bosses or, you know, your trainers would have put in 20 years ago. Yeah. To what you guys put in as a counter now. Yeah. Chalk and cheese, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. Very different. Very, very, nice. very different. And well, we have that conversation quite regularly in terms of the old school butchers and the new school and yeah. We do it and we go into VR butchers, funnily yeah. enough. Yeah, because mm. we come around October. We really enjoy it. And we love coming around seeing all you guys. Yeah. Because we're also bringing our price list, which <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's always one that go, you know, when you look at it. But you know, yeah. you in the you know, we'll try and hit eight or ten butchers a day, won't we? And you're you're going one counter and you'll think oh, okay and then you go on another counter and it's you can see the ones that are rolling with the the changes so to in speak. Fact, you can yeah, also yeah. see the ones that still or really love their job um mm. and are passionate about it rather than just going in oh, it's nine o'clock i'd better do this or yeah, yeah. say let me do yeah. a barbecue pack whatever um you can definitely see the ones that love it and want to create something and want to make a little bit of a show and a spectacle mm -hmm. um I'm not blowing smoke at your ass, Doug, but your counter <laughs> always looks it's top all right. of Yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah, I thought when you said about... Weeks, Luke's been there. The show, <laughs> the show and spectacle, I thought you meant the little song and dance number I do when you come in. So. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. But in terms of, like, talking about diversifying, I mean, did your grandfather start the farm as a purely, like, turkey farm for the Christmas market, or did that kind of adapt over the years? No, mm -hmm. that was adapted. So, um, Brandad... I never knew Granddad. He died before um, I was even thought about. Um, uh, so Granddad bought it. Dad lived in Henning Light, which is a village um, about two, three miles away yeah. from here. Lovely village. Lovely people live there. 
Oh, do you even know that? I do, yeah. <laughs> um, so my surname Sheffield, going way back, a little bit of hearted history, isn't my surname. So it's not our surname, it's Schoenfeld. So we were German Jews. Um, they settled in London, came down to the Weald countryside, because obviously that's where everyone, everyone wanted to come post-war. Um, mm. And Grandad bought this farm. Um, and Grandad pretty much was probably entrepreneurial of that moment. Wasn't he was phenomenal. It? Yeah. Um, so he tried dairy, he tried sheep, he tried pigs. He was quite lazy. Um, and he, Dad is one of seven. So he wasn't oh, wow. lazy in many respects, no. but lazy in other respects. <laughs> Um, so I think he had the children to look after the farm. But Dad always alludes to that, um, that he basically worked from the moment he could work and he didn't yeah. do school. Yeah. Um, he went to school, but yeah. he got out, or he was made to get out of school pretty early on yeah. um, to work on the farm. To work on the farm, yeah. Um, and her kids were just, I think, a coincidental, um, again, post-war Britain. Um, there wasn't a lot of money around but the affluent side of things was starting to uh, take off, if you like. So Christmas being traditional, everyone always had a Christmas turkey. Mm. And I think it was just fluke, complete right. fluke. Uh, Granddad then died suddenly um, from a heart attack. And Dad was 32? Yeah. 32. Was, I think there was like 12,000. Yeah. 12,000 head of turkeys on the farm the day he died. He died on the 31st of October. October. Right, and literally two months before Christmas, and wow. your dad was like, yeah. "He's the dad's the eldest son." Yeah, yeah. He like, yeah. So he was literally like, "Okay, it it me now kind of well, thing." English, yeah. Right. Um, and then he's scaled it. He's done many different. So, um, yeah, he ran beef, he had sheep, and then just over time, it was going more and more towards the turkeys. At one time, he was doing turkeys all year round, so I think he was rearing over twenty thousand a year. Yeah, but I was young. Um, Wow. Um, the Easter market used to be quite big. <laughs> yeah. Um, near, you know, borderline, not as big as Christmas, obviously, but borderline, I can remember them um, plucking at night at Easter, and that obviously tailed off completely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then as I was growing up, so that would have been 80s, 90s, Dad used to do a round on a Thursday and a Friday and still deliver to, to, um, to butchers on a Thursday and a Friday. Well, you know, that market. that's gone. gone. No, yeah. yeah. When I first came on the scene, think you were still rearing about 350 for each Three, yeah which you know i yeah coming from a semi-farming background but i'd never heard of easter turkey really you know no, it's you lamb know. yeah um, it's lamb yeah. and then hmm. every year that number probably over five years dwindled yeah and i think you guys were getting cleverer so you were putting your order in at christmas of say 150 turkeys putting on another five and making it 155 and Put in whatever was left in the freezer, and then that's what you were pulling out at Easter. So, yeah, so yeah. that, that, you yeah, know, one year it was just like, right, no, we're not just doing it at Easter anymore because <laughs> to make the whole process in line and everything <laughs> dirty for such yeah. a small number, actually, you were sort of weighing up, you know, the, the effort yeah. versus the numbers you were doing. It just, you know, it just didn't work anymore. Yeah. Did you're, it? Gar you're not guaranteed Easter borders anyway now. No, a handful no. at most. And, that, yes. and that's sort of yeah. the older generation, of, like you say. Yeah, which are years, now years gone by. Going. Um, so, haven't. yeah. So then I think, yeah, well, well, I've been around 19 years now, haven't I? Oh, God, have you? Oh, I have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we've always done 6,000, give or take, 6,000 for Christmas. The one thing that we've grown over the last three four years probably more than anything is the is the goose yeah numbers. yeah goose right um i think we were at 250 when i came home four years ago and we're now over 500 um mm -hmm. we probably could take it higher but they are a lot of work not the rearing yeah but the process yeah. the process is, is yeah. hard work so and it was because last year you dad was up yeah yeah well i think we'll stay at 400 we, we will stay at 400 and then the phone rings because, you know, someone else has rung up and they've had a, their suppliers let them down or whatever. And you're like, well, we can't do them this year because they're all accounted. But, well, can you do them next year? Well, yeah, okay. And then when you add them up, well, we're at 520 this year, you know, and like we're meant to be cutting back or staying as, say, mm. but, you know. Is yeah. it always better to be that way? Oh, 100%. 
Yeah, hundred percent. But I think because goose is hard, less and less people are now wanting to do it. You know, yeah. so yeah. the people that are still in it, unable to push it, you know, are you know they could increase their numbers if they wanted to. Hmm. I'm sorry to be one of those butchers that found you. You are one of those butchers, yeah. actually. Yeah, you're, you're on board this year, aren't you? I am indeed, yeah. yeah. I'm getting let down last year on poor quality. Yeah. I know who's got good quality. There you go. Right. There you go. It's up to it, yeah. And <laughs> with, with you say, like, obviously 6,000 head of turkey, I mean, how many different butcher shops are you serving and in, in sort of what wider space do you guys So serve? I did I did look this up because I thought this would come up. So we've got 50 customers, basically. Right. Be it butchers, farm shops, um, and we go from so our furthest customer is in Ascot. Yeah, as they say. Yeah, Lewis, right. Right. So Lewis yeah. Sunningdale. Yeah. They came aboard last year. Um, so Ascot, we go to Canterbury um, on the other side, and then Hove. That way. That way. So that's yeah. probably the furthest. Yeah. The radius. That's the radius. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. A so, couple of hours, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not too bad. No, and we like to, you know, I'd rather get up and get on as well. So I make their butchers get up early. So I want to be in Canterbury at five o'clock in the yeah. morning delivering, so that I can turn around, come back, and then start. And then also, where possible, if we've got us, we normally put a couple together with them, don't we? Yeah. So we've got, I've got a game dealer, funny enough, and I said, what, what is the, the good shit? Is it's a basically a Victorian railway railways, maybe. yeah, so, which has been know, in... which they bought and they put in. Do you remember Bills when Bill in Lewis when Bills first started? You guys might be a bit too young for this, but um, it was high ceilings with um, like groceries and confectionery. It was beautiful when it first yeah. started and less yeah. commercial. Yeah. Um, and it's like that, isn't it? Yeah, so it's a beautiful it's building. They've got a bakery section. They've got a fishmonger. They've got a butcher's counter. Then you know it's. Yeah. It's beautiful. So we've got right. two customers over there. So, And I did say to Luke, actually, I said, the first year I delivered there, I said, this building is magnificent. You've got to come and see it. Yeah. yeah. It didn't nice. up at 3 o'clock in the morning to come and see it last year. <laughs> but you're pleased you did. It's, 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 it's lovely. Yeah, no. No. Do you ever supply yeah. to restaurants or is it mainly retail shops and places? Uh, we do the odd pubs. Yeah, we do do pubs. Um, we, we supply a wholesaler. Um, Stores. Down in where are they? Eastbourne and Brighton and Brighton that do schools and like nursing homes and, and bits and pieces and we we grow a certain nice. strain of turkey to get the catering we size. We did a direct school last year. Yes, yeah, we there. did a school last year. He wanted sixty kilos of breast meat for their for their Christmas, Christmas dinner. dinner. Oh wow! Um, awesome. They wanted to source it all locally. Yeah, which is nice. They, they wanted lovely. to know the background story behind all the produce that they were giving the kids. Hmm. Um, it was a private school, so obviously slightly more affluent than a a state-run school and had less rules than a state-run school would have. Um, but we quite enjoyed doing them, didn't we? Because we, yeah. we, we like like yourselves, like a story. And it was quite nice to thread that story into our Yeah, we, we supplied them with some sort of PDF yeah. images and some history of the farming. And I think while the, the, the Christmas dinner was going on, they had like a, a rolling montage on the um like on the on the whiteboard or wherever it was in the hall basically that sort of well your carrots are from here your turkey is from yeah. here you know and it was nice it's just trying to get those kids engaged wasn't it well really? understanding which i think we all are keen on of understanding where the food comes from yeah it doesn't yeah. just come out of a supermarket right. so yeah very cool and yeah. is it all and in terms of is it just butchers you supply to or do you do farm gate sales as well we do do farm gate. Um, so we, I think historically, your dad's always done around 100 or so, is not he, from the farm gate. Yeah. And that number's gone up and down every year. <clears throat> and then a few years ago. The yeah. only reason I'm smiling is because dad isn't the most, uh, what's the word? Uh... Sociable? <laughs> Politically correct. Sociable. Right. So, correct. Especially at Christmas when he's. I've got to say, I've met him a few times. He's, he's, never, the, he's never the chattiest. No, he's, <laughs> he is chatty if you get him at the right time. But literally, when he's pulled goodness knows what ridiculous hours over a period just before Christmas, he's not. None of us are really. No, that's but the thing. I only ever see him at Christmas when it's. Yeah. No, well, no, yeah. No. He's <laughs> not faking a smile, let's put it that way. Yeah. Um, and he, we always used to laugh that people would come to the bar, and this is before our involvement, 
get their turkey put in a plastic bag and basically drop kicked in the back of their car. Here's your turkey. Here's your turkey. Merry yeah. Christmas. I am brilliant. <laughs> you wasn't Great. so big. I am very tired. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah, we kind of got hold of that a little bit. Well, you you'd always you'd always wanted to get out of it, and like we were very cautious because at the time, yeah, you know, I was off doing a completely different job, but I always came back to do two weeks of Christmas. That was the condition of marriage to Lucy was I gave two weeks of Christmas. Yeah, you know, I'd, I'd, that's I'd, actually not a joke. That's that not a joke. Genuine. That was genuine. When I asked, I was all hand in marriage. It was more like a contract. You you over here. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and bigly so yeah, that's what I did. So I came back. I took a week off first week of December because I run the plucking shed or ran yeah, the that day, shed fine. at the time. And then basically I went back to the day job for a week and then I come back for trusting. And that mm. that so I took two weeks off my four week allocation <laughs> from my day job to come and do the farm. And we always said, well, it's a shame that we're not pushing the farm gate a bit more because no disrespect, you know, I'm getting the end price, not. Yeah, the middleman price, so that's get it. So then you came up with the idea of actually adding a bit of value um, to the turkey rather than just putting it in a in a few turkey bag and drop kick it in a boob of the car. You know, you designed a turkey box. Yeah, didn't you? Uh, yeah, um, and it's gone through different oh, connotations. Too many. Turkey boxes. You know, we had our okay. family members design a box once, didn't we? Yeah, and we changed them. But so we now basically for all our farm gate customers and. You know, the butcher, we can box the turkey that one we, that we do yours and boxes. But for the farm gate boxes, we wrap it in our own grease proof paper. Um, we put in a, a sort of a, a Merry Christmas card, but it's got a recipe for a Grammy's best turkey gravy. Top of cooking cooking times, because nice. which you must find people that yeah. want to have the traditional Christmas meal but don't necessarily know how to cook any longer. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the amount of times that you, you must get it, how long do I cook this turkey for? Yeah. What, All the time. What... And, and, the, you know, Constantly. and the, the, the beauty is for you, as you understand what good meat is. And that yeah. actually a traditionally reared Christmas turkey that we produce is 22 to 24 weeks of age when it is cold, basically. So it's gone through its full maturity process. It has got so much fat in the muscle, in you know, on the back, everything. That will cook in half the time than an equivalent 12 to 14 week old turkey because yeah. it's got the visceral fat in there that basically will heat up quicker than the muscle and will drain down through that bird, cooking the muscle as it goes and, you know, don't overcook it basically so we spent a lot of time educating the farm gate customer this will cook quicker and the repeat customer we get back yeah. off that but as an and another little addition we put in a little pop-up timer for the farm gate customer and i've never used one to be honest because i just go on it comes out of the oven that's running clear that's cooked you yeah, know yeah. or now i know a lot of you guys now use these proper meat thermometers and our nephew does as well he's a phenomenal cook isn't he and yeah he, you know he's got a meter meter or i don't know anyway but they all say these pop-up timers work and they actually one of the questions we normally get asked now has got the pop-up time or mm. hasn't it because that really does work um, yeah so and then we put rosemary and bay in there and so just add a bit of value and what we also have done we decorate our Christmas, like our Sussex barn now. We... So, well, Lucy decorates our Christmas <laughs> <laughs> I clean it. Bearing in mind, it's where we trust as well. Yeah. So it needs a lot of yeah. before it gets to the decoration stage. But I, I've got a bit of a deal going with a mate of mine who works at a Christmas tree farm. Mm -hmm. We, you know, we have a bit of a trade for Christmas trees versus a couple of turkeys, so to speak. So he gives nice. us any sort of odd shaped Christmas trees and stuff. And we decorate it. We put fairy lights up. Um, I you keep saying we, Lucy. Of... <laughs> oh, I'm used we're to it, man. Dark, we're a team. Man, I'm used to it. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I think for us, we, we realise it's also Christmas. Um, probably like you, you're like, yeah, it's Christmas. It's Christmas. Yeah, I remember now, and you're supposed to be enjoying it. So I think selfishly, we did it also for us. Yeah, to kind of go. Okay, we've got Twinkly Lights. We've got bloody yeah. lip at Christmas, or whatever it is. Yeah, uh, we, yeah, we have mulled wine going, don't we? Just for the smell and yeah, you know, create a bit of atmosphere. And what you tend to find now is, you know, we've 
I think we're at 350 from the farm gate now. Yeah. Versus 100, which is, and it's over seven years. Yeah. But enough, yeah. what we're very, very conscious of is I don't want to take yeah. your customer. Right, yeah. So you've got to be quite careful, you know, because obviously we have a butcher in Horu, which is literally a mile down the road. And we supply that butcher. And we supply that butcher. Happy to say So yeah. I don't want to advertise in the Horu yeah. parish magazine yeah. that you get your Christmas turkey from me because I don't want to tread on his toes and upset him. Yeah. You know, so it's we're very, line, it's, a, it? it's a fine line, it's very conscious. And we do get customers ring up and go, well, I usually get my turkey from such and such. And I encourage them yeah. to still get their turkey from such and such. Even right. like people at the gym or wherever, they say, oh, oh, do you sell them direct? And I go, yeah. Where do you normally get them from? Oh, we get them from there. Well, oh, they're right. our turkey. They're so our turkey. You just carry go, on. carry on. Yeah. What you're doing. It's the same yeah. price to them, isn't it? So Exactly that. And yeah. not only that, you know, it's one less trip for them, you know, because if you go to your butcher on Christmas, you're picking up yeah. your ham, you're picking up your pigs in blanket, da 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 you know. Yeah. Um, but people that come to us, we tend to find have done it historically and they've told so and so yeah. and haven't they? And that's how it's sort of grown. We haven't advertised it or done anything like that because, we, you know, we don't want to tread on our butcher's toes because, you know, farm gate is less than 5% of the bigger picture, you know. Yeah. yeah. Um, do that. And I don't want to upset or lose or suddenly have to go down to five and a half thousand because I've pinched one customer from someone who buys 400, if you see what I mean. So yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's a fine line. Yeah. It's a fine line. But, well, you know, we enjoy that side of it, don't we? Yes. I love the part where you get to, once they're all trusts and they're all in a little water, and we like the delivery part, you know, well, we can, we both came down to your bridge that you put them in is fantastic. Yes. I absolutely love where we put your turkeys last year. What, the morgue? In the morgue. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I've so, never been uh, one of them before, but that was yes. interesting. Our backup where? fridge and middle farm that we use for the, you've not Has seen not it. Shown you this? I haven't seen no, it. No, it's down no. in the oh, warehouse. You can't see it. <laughs> but it is, it's uh, Helen, the owner, her father bought it second hand, and it is a ex morgue fridge. Oh, genuinely. 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 Yeah. That is There's crazy. There's about eight doors down it. Yeah. <laughs> Coffin sized wow. doors. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah. we try not yeah. to use <laughs> the word would. morgue for. And customers are around. Let's go get it from the morgue. Why don't I? Yeah. yeah. Gosh. That's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, it was lovely seeing you guys doing the deliveries at Christmas. You're way too perky for considering how much work you'd had to do in the time. Well, it's no the different it to you, is it? I'm dealing with one week. You're dealing with 20. Yeah. And so it is no different. It's pretty so. leveling, isn't it? When we go to our, the butchers and we're like, Hanging a little bit, and then we come and see you, and we're going, yeah. Jesus Christ, they we're tired. Those guys must be double tired to us because, you know, like, you when they're, they're like, they're you're busy telling you, Oh, I was up till three cutting yeah. down. It's like, well, that's it's just yeah. one meat, you can, yeah. You've then got to sort out the whatever Mrs. Jones wants as a special because someone's coming from Boxing Day that she hasn't seen for 10 years, yeah. you know. It's and the public yeah. and their demands for having exactly as they would like it. Well, that's it. It's something if you forget, you know, Doris's half pound of sausage meat and she kicks off. That's the, the last, it's the last thing that you need right there. You have just yeah. ruined her. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they're going, of course, I'll, I'll get them into dirty just for that. That's fine. Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, this fridge. Smile and wave, smile and wave. I will, I will show you the fridge next week, Luke. I'll take you down and show you the fridge. Oh, I'll yeah. Take you to the morgue. Thank you. To the morgue. I appreciate but it. But in terms of, over the last couple of years and things like that, with challenges you've had as turkey farmers, suppose it be the elephant in the room, not to mention avian flu and the effect that caused. How did yeah. you guys find that? Yeah, I've been taking COVID any COVID day. Was a dream. COVID, COVID was a dream over avian <laughs> COVID and farmers were like best friends. Oh, yeah. Avian influenza, on the other hand, I think even this year we're still... Still on tender. We're on the brink. I mean, unfortunately, so to, I mean, it's always around, isn't it? It's just obviously that we had quite a, a strong strain for the last couple of mm. years. Yeah. Um, yeah. And the trouble is, we're, you know, we've got old, well, Doug, you've been, you've seen some of our sheds, you know. Yeah. Don't get me wrong, we invest and we build new sheds, but at the same time, we're still rearing in a shed that um, is, when was the cow shed got up? 
Grand Ole was so it's one of the oldest ones. Wouldn't have been no no no, 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 that we had, wasn't it? Because of what happened in East Hopi, which isn't very far from the Yeah, farm. so there was a there's a commercial duck rearer who's got four farms, one in East Hopi, and he went down with Avenue and Furniza, um, and I think 80 or 1,000 duck or culls down no. there. Wow. Um, but as a result of him guessing it, so basically you put the pin in where he was, a three-kilometre zone around him is called the pro Pro- prevention pre- prevention zone and then a seven kilometer zone around the three kilometer zone is what they call the surveillance zone and that put our farm in a surveillance zone right so we then had to apply to defra to get a license to basically stock the farm this was 10 days before the first pulp was going to due to land so wow. we we we're very lucky we got a very good poultry vet i rung him up on the saturday he came out and did the inspection on the sunday um we then had to do a bit of netting of certain areas so we didn't have to net the whole shed we just had to net where we were going to rear for example so we do have two rearing sections in that very old shed and we had to put bird netting all around it basically so no bird could get in and i'm very fortunate i've got a friend of mine who's a fruit farmer in Hawkehurst, and i said you haven't got any fruit netting and he said, well, yeah, I have. So I just literally went in the van and picked up fruit net and we just put net everywhere, didn't we? I mean, mm-hmm. it, it was everywhere. Right. But it ticked the boxes to get the license to be able to to get the first lot of poultry on. So I think 3,000 poultry landed. We already had the geese at this point because the geese come in end of May, end of April, beginning of the May. The geese came in on a Thursday and we were putting the surveillance zone on the Friday. Yeah. So it was oh, like, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, we, we got, got, we got really good with the geese and then we had a couple of weeks order before the turkey landed. And then part of the inspector, part of the surveillance zone yeah. is DEFRA or AFRA, Animal Plant and Health, mm-hmm. should go and see anyone with poultry in our surveillance zone. So I was right. just walking across the courtyard one day and I saw some bloke stood at the gate. Mm-hmm. I'll go up another chat with him. And he went, I'm from AFRA. And I went, oh, right, how are, how are you? Yeah, 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 fine. He goes, oh, I just want to know how many backyard chicken you've got here. Yeah. I said, well, I haven't got any chicken. And he said, oh, right, well, I've got you down as a, you know, backyard chicken. I said, well, I've got 400 geese and three and a half thousand turkeys. And his face just drops because <laughs> he didn't realise what we were. Yeah, Even yeah. though we'd applied to DEFRA to get the licence and everything, you know, it, it just shows you that paperwork doesn't always get joined up along the way. No, maybe. yeah, exactly. So we then got an emergency inspection, didn't we, where Animal Plant and Health come to the farm and they parked all out the front. So there's two vets and someone from Animal Plant and Health and they were they were really nice. really really lovely, really nice. phenomenal guys, and yeah. really good with really the good because they wanted to come and swap the geese basically because geese um, can carry avian influenza and not die from it and right. show signs of it. Turkeys get AI; they go down like a dose of salts, like literally, right? And so that's why they wanted to come and swap the geese basically, just to make sure that the geese weren't carrying it or had been. Subject, right. but in to do that, they basically they refused to bring their vehicles onto the farm, which is fair enough because of we didn't they, want them. They, the they're farm. going to the no. farm, so yeah. they parked on the front. They then put on full asthmas suits and breathing their apprentices. <laughs> <laughs> if someone drove past the farm, they'd have thought, Oh my god, what the hell is happening there? So, <laughs> and then in doing so, we then went into the, the geese and we swabbed 60 geese and it was absolutely fine and he went around all the turkey and one of the head vet wanted to go into some of the rearing sheds for the turkey and stuff and he said you're doing everything you can um but you go to some of these talks and you come back yeah and you're, you're, pet- you're petrified you're absolutely petrified you're like well we won't we won't rear we can't rear. you know we're you know yeah. how are you going to do it you know they they basically you know these big commercial producers that have these you know ventilated control sheds and everything they they say what they do is they put all the litter, so all the shavings that are going to be used for that brood, so to speak, they will put and stack at one end of the shed. It'll have all been disinfected before it goes in, then the shed's disinfected, da 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 
And basically, the people that go into these sheds, they change their clothes, they change their shoes, they have a shower before they go in and the shower when they come out. And they're still getting it. And yeah. actually, they're having, you know. So then, me with my open sheds where birds can fly in and out merrily, you're like, we're screwed, aren't we? Yeah. It's like a lot of things, it's chance and it's luck. Um, and not and may our luck. Not may our luck continue. continue. Because the trouble we've also got as a seasonal producer, all we are doing at the minute, much to Lucy's disgust, is spending money, basically. You know, our food bill last month was 17000 just for, for one month for July, just for one month. Yeah. So I think the pulps were just over 30. Yeah, just over 30,000, just for the pulps. It's day old pulps. And then you've obviously, I think we've got about five grand's worth of gas, three grand's worth of shavings, and then the food bills start coming. So then, and up until the point that I've delivered them to your butcher shop, they've not earned me a penny, but we've yeah. spent a fortune. Yeah. So the the worry for us is you get AI, for example, on the 26th of November and they cull your whole farm, you've had all your expense and the government compensation isn't going to... If help. you get government compensation, although they, they have changed They've it. They've changed it now. Is but, it good you know, or is it absolutely fuck all compared to what you would get in return for sale? It's, it's, it's definitely not... Um, uh what you know it's not it's not, it's not the final paid. price no no right, yeah. you know, no it might just be enough to go again so to speak if you're lucky <laughs> so um, almost just cost covering and that's pretty much it yeah yeah if, if yeah. that i think yeah. to be honest we you know i think they do it on a case by case basis mm. and then obviously you'd have a if you were unfortunate to have to get it you you'd then have a period of um Oh, you have to have a period of um, listen. Quite like 366 days. It's like 12 months and one day where you wow. have to have no poultry on the farm whatsoever. So, Jesus. You so would, you've lost one year, and then, and then you lose another, another year. year. Yeah. By which time you have found an You're old line because before. you've still got to deliver Christmas. Yeah. And are you going to come back to me after two years of that supplier bailing you out? So I, you know, who, yeah. It doesn't bear thinking about. No. Um, oh, it's making and, me nervous just think, hearing about it. <laughs> so, and if you, if you did think about it, you wouldn't do it. You know, ah, like, I can't think, like, think like, no, much about no, it. You, know, you throw yourself out. But... You know, we, we do as much due diligence as we can. So every shed has yeah. got a dip on it. Um, you know, we, we change footwear for certain sheds. We change. I only really get these, really, yeah. with your dad overseeing me. Yeah. I've got a problem. He comes and helps me. But, you know, I'm the only one that really has the contact with the geese on a on a daily basis. So I change my footwear for that contact for that contact, and we do as much as we can, basically. Yeah. Um, without, you know, you know, just be constantly changing clothes when you're not careful. <laughs> and the trouble we've also got is our straw or our litter is kept in another shed right. that birds can get into, that rats can run across, you know, and and they do say it, literally like a pin oh, head. It's tiny. It's to do to ease. Morning. You know, carried on a foot, a piece of straw, a leaf that blows in the door when you you open the door in the morning to go and start your checks. As soon as that gets in, they're they're done basically. Yeah, wow. So, but That's at the terrifying. minute, touch touch wood, it's not as around at the minute, is it? No. Yeah. But we're about to hit autumn. Is when it's to do with the migration. Migration. Right. Okay. Oh right. Yeah. Well, of well, yeah. yeah. Oh, but that. yeah, we take COVID any day over AI yeah, it's threat. A breeze. Yeah, don't get me wrong. It. We were we were doing some weird and wonderful butchery, cutting turkeys in half and stuff. We could yeah. he cancelled Christmas at the last minute, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Like and then Kent yeah. wasn't weren't allowed to come into Sussex. Kent weren't allowed to travel into Sussex, so we had yeah. Kent's oh, people bizarre. coming down. And I put my turkey up a week early because they're going to be in lockdown. Oh, I think you go to the yeah. border and then do a pass across. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> Over yeah. the wall, yeah. <laughs> I would, I would take that any day. You know, it was brilliant. Yeah, I love weird and wonderful butchery. That sounds like right up my street. Yeah, <laughs> you haven't seen my butcher. <laughs> any butchery. That was good. So, how would you feel that um, how your animal husbandry sets you apart from other people, or is it much, very much, the quality of the bird is? Uh, I think you know. The I think with us. 
I think the weirdest thing for a farmer to say, and I still, I don't struggle saying it, I struggle with people's understanding of it, which I get completely, Hmm. is we love our animals. Yeah. And people always go, well, how do you love them if you're going to kill them at the end? Mm -hmm. That's the business side of things. And we, we have to be like that. But we joke that you go around and dad goes around every night and every morning kissing everyone. Good morning. <laughs> good night. And we do love them because yeah. we love what we do. So if we're rearing with passion, like you, you butcher with passion. You love your job. So first and foremost, what sets us over and above, I think, is our love of what we do. We appreciate of how lucky we are to live the mm. life that we live. Oh, so lucky. Um, They're high, well, you're better at speaking about the high animal welfare side of things. Well, yeah, we just do everything possible. Because we we buy our poults in, they are literally day old. So they they are are hatched, and within 24 hours of that hatch, they are in a brood ring on our farm, basically. So when you say poults, just for the the non-initiate, it's basically talking baby chicks. A baby chick. Right. Like baby. Easter. You know, on the front of lovely Easter card. Like that. Yeah. That's that tiny. Tiny little <laughs> chubby chick, basically. And the then, only time they look cute. The only time they look cute. <laughs> and then they grow into the teenager phase, which is probably much where, where we're at at the moment. About 10 or 12 weeks, where they're, they're putting their feather out and, you know, and they just look a bit skanky and like... You know. Remember what you were like as teenagers, boys? Yeah. A bit yeah. skanky. Yeah. yeah a bit That's skanky, what they're yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we, we just do our utmost to ensure that they have the best life possible. Yeah. Um, you know, because we have free range turkeys in the past avian influenza but avian influenza flipped that a little bit a little bit and we have changed where we rear the geese and the turkey so we we did have one we used we we even built it and it's called the free range shed and for two or three years we had turkeys in there and they they free ranged in a yeah five acre paddock yeah about about five acre paddock and we had two alpacas um that basically lived in that paddock all the time and then basically we're joined we're joined with the yeah you know, with the turkeys basically because alpacas are very good at warding off predators basically yeah. um so they would tree range out there very very happy then obviously ai came along and then basically we were like yeah no well they've got they a we were told we had to house them anyway that was the first, was the first last year we could have done it but because of what we'd gone through with the safely outbreak we were so we, just started, we were too yeah, so we, we, we didn't. didn't and this year we don't actually put our geese down in that shed partly because it's the shed that runs out into a field geese are messy because they play with water yeah all the time all the time and it's super inquisitive super well. inquisitive and we are actually free ranging the geese this year. So we've got 400 of the 500 geese actually outside. And it is cool. amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I, you know, we love having the geese out. Well, you know, when I've let them out, because you were out on a jog run the other morning, weren't you? And you were about a mile and a half away. Yeah. And uh, you knew when I'd let the geese out at <laughs> six o'clock in the morning because they just created a massive roar. You can hear them. Yeah, you know, they charge yeah. around the pen. They just it's like yeah. they're genuinely excited. They're excited and, to be yeah. out. Aren't they? Yeah, they're stretching. Wings, yeah, stretching. It's, it's lovely. Um, so we're trying the geese outside this year. We are just now in the debate, my you know, father and all yeah. as to when we don't let them out anymore because I need them to eat a bit more. That's the only yeah. trouble if they're out in the paddock. So they're having a lovely. Day. They're having a lovely time. Albeit when I put them in tonight, yeah, it's a bit wet and miserable. They all rush to the food troughs. And the first week, they didn't really go back in much. But now, if you were to walk down there in the middle of the day, at least 20% are in the eating, so to speak, and they come back out and it will switch over. It's not new and exciting. It's not new and exciting, like, and they do get hungry, the- so I'll go in and eat a bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but in terms of the turkey, so we have high animal welfare in so much as we are very loosely populated in our sheds. Doug, you, you've been, yeah. you came and saw them reared last year, didn't you? you know, yeah. we, we welcome all of our butchers to mm. come to the farm. Even if you're not our butcher, please come to the farm. Oh, no, to be I fair, think... my boys, well, the youngest, obviously, that came with me and the eldest have both said, we're going to go and see the turkeys this Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Oh, 100%. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> because I think if, if one of your suppliers doesn't want you to come and visit them then that's when you need to start asking questions yeah. yourself yeah. as to why yeah. can't i go and see that being real or whatever um so you know we are 
very loosely populated in our sheds. We have a lot of sheds because 6,000 yeah. turkeys take up a lot of room. Mm -hmm. But we could have half the sheds yeah. if we didn't want them to rear them to the high standards that we want them to be reared to, so to speak. So they're loosely populated. We've just started hanging all the toys in, haven't we? So because um, they're very inquisitive, they love pecking and stuff. So we put in um, like empty drinks bottles that they can peck and play with. CDs are a good one. Um, right. To hang a CD cool. up a bit of a string and <laughs> obviously where it twizzles around with the light, partly you want it to peck that yeah. rather than pecking its mate. Because yeah. they do, like if... Um, Again, older sheds. If a beam of sunlight comes through and is on the on the straw or on the floor, that immediately will attract eight or ten turkeys around it, and they're all pecking it, pecking, pecking, pecking. <laughs> and then one of them will leave its head down while its mate pecks its head by accident, and then all of a and sudden, then it'll be like, oh, it's bleeding, oh, it's bleeding, and the state of blood to them is they are, um, they they are very 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 big descendants of vultures, aren't they? Yeah, so they basically are. they will take like little meat. raptors, aren't they? Yeah, they yeah. are. They're so little they'll, they'll well, take, look yeah. at that. Look at that beak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. when they've got yeah. beak. So they take you know that one's bleeding, that one's injured. All right, we better get rid of that, and they will beat it up. Basically. So mm. you know we do have a hospital pen. So I think I had one tonight that basically bless him. They, had a little bit out of its head. So then we take it to the hospital head, you know, we rub its medicine. Could we do, you know, we put creams on it to, to help it heal. And then, you know, we, we they heal phenomenally. Yeah. 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 And Unbelievably. You can, and it's like a scab, like we would get if you yeah. had a graze. Over time, it grows, the new skin grows underneath and the scab falls off. And like you can hear when they're getting annoyed with their, um, the stage of where they've got in terms of that injury yeah. repairing itself because they'll be scratching their head and it will sound like they'll, they'll, they'll be trying to <laughs> oh, <laughs> as it's it's itching them basically and they want yeah. you know want rid of it um so and you know what else are we you know, they roost they go yeah they've got bins. we've got feed bins in the pens as well on the outside of the bins because turkeys do love to oh we came back even from harvesting late like, one yeah. couple of weeks ago and i said yeah come over, come over and have a look at this shed and the lights were still on because we reared them under lights for about six to eight weeks mm. and then father and i and i have a bit of a debate on should we turn the light off tonight well we don't know if we want to turn the light off tonight because we don't want to get scared and crowd up and smother or whatever and i said they were in a yard weren't we i said just come and have a look and they were all on top of their beams with all their heads hanging over the edge, fast asleep. Bless them, weren't yeah. they? And you were like, you hadn't seen them. Like I've that. never seen them like that. No. Oh, um, wow. And they are on ablib food, ablib water, and they are fresh water, fresh straw every day, basically. Checked three, four times a day. Checked three um, times a day. I mean, they are pretty much self sufficient now, aren't they? They're all, yeah. they're all reared, they're all off like heat, they're all, you know, on natural daylight, so to speak rather than having video you know, light uh, full time. Um, and then, yeah, father and I, and I, first jobs of the morning is he has his sheds, I have my sheds, just because that's the way it works. Mm -hmm. um, so I go into my sheds, check, obviously, food, water, and then obviously give them a fresh litter for the day, fresh store down. Um, tomorrow's a big feed day. So we had eight ton of food in this morning. Yep. So we'll feed eight ton of food tomorrow. Um, mm -hmm by hand which keeps us fit which is why my father and law at 80 he does say don't fill the bags up quite as full as i do but you know he still <laughs> he still likes to put in a shift bless him yeah um so yeah so we'll feed that tomorrow and we try and get sort of on a on a weekend so on a friday we have a big catch up so we have a big feed up so we know that they're going to be fine for food and stuff so he literally is obviously then just strawing down and, and doing the checks at the weekends and stuff um, but yeah, no, we just, we love them. Absolutely. I love the poultry. When I came home to farm, I wanted to come and learn the poultry, do the poultry side of it. Mm -hmm. Obviously we alluded at the beginning of the podcast that we do do arable and stuff. Your father, well, your dad likes that more than me. He enjoys yeah, the arable it's because it's side. always something that we've always done. Um, the way that the government's going with farmers with regards to arable, if they don't want us to farm the land anymore um yeah. that will come full circle they will realize at some point that we need to be self-sufficient we're an island yeah as, yeah as self-sufficient as we can be but the it, amount of acreage that is currently being taken yeah, yeah. out of arable production or food production is scary is is scary and i it will be next year that they really realize this because a lot of 
food, a lot of the crops were planted last year before the acceptance on all these schemes um, were granted. In, yeah. In, so, and a lot's in storage already. So it won't be until this time next year where we're seeing, or the public are seeing, the kick on effect of right. price rise. Yeah. Of yeah. bread, of cereal, yeah. of all the normal kind of yeah types. So, you know so yeah. Had, yeah he's so he's always loved the, the, yeah the arable. the arable side i wanted to learn the poultry side and that's where my passion lies i need 50 acres of straw basically in a rotation as long as we've got 50 acres of straw coming in the sheds then i can do what i love to do um yeah but i still have to drive tractors and stuff that's oh. <laughs> Such a hard life. Oh, yeah. terrible. It's so bad. Boys, toys. Yeah. I mean, I've yeah. I've been and seen the fleet of tractors and combine harvesters you've got. It's a very this very nice garage of we're, big boys' toys, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> yeah, we're very lucky. We're very lucky. yeah, we are lucky. Yeah, mm. but that's again through diversification. You know, we wouldn't be able to afford the machinery we've got if we just did the Arab. No, the Arab no. wouldn't pay for it. Not to What's it. nice is that we've got the unit income and we've got the poultry to spread the risk across the three sectors of the farm. So and ultimately, I think if someone enjoys something, i.e. dad really enjoys the Arab ball, flipping it. Have a new toy. Have it. Do yeah, it. it. Yeah. You're not enjoying it. What's yeah. the point of doing it? You might as well enjoy it rather than give it to the government. <laughs> very true. Yeah. So Very, very true. I mean, there must be a, quite a stark contrast from when you've had all the turkeys there in terms of noise to when they're all gone. Because, I mean, I've been down when you're kind of, the sheds are full. It's a, it's a noisy farm. It must be quite... <laughs> it is, but it, it's weird jarring. because you say that. We don't notice it because when they come in as, as poultry, you hear like the faint cheep, cheep, cheep. And then as the seasons go through and we get near autumn, it gets louder and louder and crescendos and kind of... The, and then Just before dark, if you went out there yeah. just before dark now... You you could wear earphones. It's that noise. It's quite it's, 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 intense. They're all talking to each other, and yeah. the geese never stop talking. No, the I, geese are always there. Even like if you woke up at two in the night, they're still talking. They're still talking. You can still hear them talking. But the turkeys, once they do go up, they go quiet. And mm. obviously, as the sun starts coming up, that's when. But I think that's going back to obviously, if they were in the wild, the turkeys would have to keep quiet. Whereas the geese may be on the pond or on water. So uh, they wouldn't necessarily keep quiet. Yeah, so you, yeah. if you kind of try and think of their heritage, if you like, and see what their origins are, you kind of understand them a little bit more. Yeah. Mm. But come, oh, what is it, the 6th, 7th of December, whenever we finish the big call, you do walk around a, and and apart little... from four goats, one alpaca and three horses, it is deadly silent. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. It's yeah. weird. Because we start the big call on the 28th of November. And then that's it. We we go until the last it's one done. is done. How le- so however it, long it takes. However long it takes. You say the twenty. It's the end of November. Yeah. And it depends on where it falls, falls really. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we want a thousand a day when we start. I was about so, to ask how many did you try and get in a day, and how long? Is minimum, it minimum. We're not happy is if we don't do a thousand. It's, it's not a competition. competition. I mean, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. If it's if it's not a thousand, we're a bit. Oh, that wasn't a very good yeah. day. Yeah, because I've done um, small scale before, nothing in the thousands. But me and a, a team of, you know, probably six of us have done a, maybe four or five hundred in a few days. Yeah. Of, 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 yeah. Of, of, yeah. Of total processing. And we're, is that hand them, plucked? Well. uh we've got a dry plucker yeah yeah and then uh we'd hang them for a few days and then gut them closer to mid-december yes it's nothing's really changed so basically we 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 stun and kill so we've we've got high voltage stunners so yeah the bird doesn't feel anything it's done um we now have to bleed as part of legislation so right. we have to bleed them over a tank uh, they then go through a big quilling machine. So we've got a, a, a mechanical machine that takes out the big quill feathers and yeah. tail feathers. It saves your fingers. They then go over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they then go over a dry blucking machine, and probably fifty percent of the feather is removed over that. Yeah. We could get more, but at the same mm. time, we've got a team of hand pickers. So you know, you've got to control the flow out of the shed, basically. And then basically, we have a team of. We, we try to get 40, if we can, um, basically, and they go through and they are dry plucked. So they are traditional dry plucked. And then they're game hung for a minimum of 10 days. Cool. Um, so then while they're in the fridges, so Lucy runs the fridge, I run the plucking shed, 
and oversee the killing shed. Um, you hang them all in weights, don't you? Yeah. So they're all hung in pound weight because we are old school. So anything from eight pound up to 40 pounds, they are all hung in, in that category. And then pounds. once the last one's done, that fridge gets shut basically. And then we are, me and my father-in-law and nephew or a couple of, you know, if we need the other people, we will be chasing Doug going, right, can I have your order, please? Can I have your order, please? Can I have your order, please? And he'll go, here's my initial order. Right, that's great. Keep adding, keep taking orders, keep talking to me. Don't, you know, don't say you're sold out until I tell you you're sold out. Yeah. <laughs> and then basically we will start working through that order. So mm. you guys will want, you know, 10, 4 kilos, 10, 5 kilos, 26 kilos, whatever. We will then go and hand pick that all off the racks and build another rack with a big sign on it saying middle file basically yeah. bronze are bronze or white are white or because we do white and bronze turkeys um yeah. albeit you only have bronze um and then well that's what that is how you know we will do it and then basically we will do that for all 50 customers basically so as one rack comes clear it's soon filled back up again with a customer's order so to mm. speak so we have a lot of fridge space um and then so that takes well, because we normally, hopefully, we've normally finished culling by about the third, fourth of December. We then have a couple of days actually where it's actually a bit quieter. We might have the odd little order it, to make up. Christmas falls as All bad. depends on where Christmas falls, basically. Mm. Um, and do you and do then, some so, early for Thanksgiving as well? Just cause yeah, a... yeah, we do some early for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Um, we do some for butchers that want a mini order early. Caterers catering turkeys we probably in the past we've been known to do about 1100 in, in november basically wow. but different butchers that won a few here da, 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 da. and then we we always go into the main coal with just under five thousand um that's how we aim to do it partly because of fridge space um you've seen our big hanging bar and that will hold about four thousand and then we had other fridges that would take up the surplus we it's quite an just, operation you've got in terms of because you've got I and mean, you've got different areas that you can then convert into a fridge yes. as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Probably. the plucking shed, we built a fridge in the plucking shed, um, of which we made it so we could take parts of that fridge down. So two roof sections come out, two wall sections come out, and then it's a plucking shed. And then once all the plucking's done, we sweep all the peppers out of it. Zero. Put put the walls back up, put the fridge, uh, the roof back on, and turn the chillers on, and then that is part of that bucking shed. Then becomes a fridge, basically. Awesome. And um, we just built another fridge as well this year, just because you can never have enough fridge. Space. You guys must say that, yeah. Christmas. Yeah. yeah. More yeah. space for merrier. So. Makes life yeah. so much easier, doesn't it? Yeah. No, yeah. we go to one butcher that's got a big farm shop, and he hires in ten chiller trailers as well as wow. his normal fridge space just for the Christmas, you know. It's huge, isn't it? Yeah. If you think about it, it's massive. Yeah. All, all for one day. We do we do stand still at points in the real busy times, okay? This for is one day. One yeah. Day. Our whole Every year. It's for one yeah. day. Yeah. 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 Thank you. It's all made that day continue, but yeah, it of course. is crazy. Yeah, it is but that is you do, didn't you? You know, when I'm getting in at two in the morning sometimes in the run up, and you're thinking, I've stayed, I've done a you know, sixteen hour 16 day, hour. so someone can have one meal and want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's mental. yeah. and burn it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. That's the worst case. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What I like though is in terms of like, as you say, keeping it in the family. I like when I came to visit. I think if I remember rightly, your daughter was doing plucking. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. She yeah. wants horses. She's got to kind of pay She's back. She's got to pay back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is that the deal? It's a give yeah. and take thing. Yeah. No, no, yeah, completely. She's from, right, from the moment, well, when I was pregnant, I wasn't allowed to help in the plucking shed no. because obviously I couldn't. You're a girl. I can't do that. <laughs> but I could have. <laughs> um, and then from pretty much as soon as she could walk, she's been in and around it. It's completely normal for her. I um, do remember we had a child minor because Lucy went back to work and then um, obviously you have to have child care as you guys will know mm -hmm. and i remember our child i went to pick lissy up from the child minder and she said she she doesn't see 
the process, does she? I said, well, yeah, she stands next to me when we're doing it. And she was mortified, this childminder, that I was like, she is a farmer's daughter. Yeah, she, is, right. she needs to know this. She needs to know the process where, her, you know, we're not hiding this from her. Yeah. The trouble is, it's hidden from too many people. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, farm yeah. kids are just built different. Like, is there, it's another breed, I think, because it's just they understand the reality and that they're not number one in some respects. I think, and I think you're really animals, far on there. animals come first, always. She yeah. also, and that's what I, I, I kind of draw with the horses. If you get up then, you go and make sure they're okay first. You can go yeah. back to bed, but you've got to make sure they've had their breakfast first and they've yeah. had their water and they're comfortable. And then you mm. come back. But she she's had to fend for herself at times. Well, we're, of course, we're around, but that's teaching her. Far more than I would teach her if I was sitting with her all the time. Yeah. She's teaching her to use her initiative, to figure out things, to, you know, it's life experience, isn't it? Really? It is. And she's, yeah. it's really nice to see, actually, because like, there'll be some years she wants to be mega involved in it. And then there'll be, I remember a couple of years where she sort of didn't want to be that involved. Whereas this year, she's yeah. massively back involved. You know, like she, cool. she loved Harvest this year. You know, so she's been sitting on the combine with Granddad. She's been grain carting with me or our nephew, hasn't she? Yeah. You know, she is a farm kid. She can drive the little gate around the field and stuff, you know. Yeah. At 15, you know, she's living her best life. She's yeah, absolutely yeah. loving us. We are so lucky to be able to get her, aren't we? Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I think one of the nicest things is the intergenerational uh, life experience. So not only am I seeing my childhood relived a little bit, what all the things I did, but in now in a modern day, but Lissy interacting with dad is is priceless. Really, well, he's, he's taught her to drive a combine. Oh wow! Yeah, That's she, awesome. she, she's been driving the combine this year. Yeah, and like <laughs> we were on one farm when she come out, she goes, "I drive the combine, dad." The beta man's not going to be very happy because the line's a bit wiggly behind me, but I, I did it. And then the next, um, you know, a couple of days later, we were in another field and he let her have another go. And she goes, my line's a lot straighter this time, Dad. You know, so, and that's phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah. You know, and, ho- and hopefully with her seeing how hard her granddad worked, still at 80, her grandmother worked supporting the farm and, and us when we we're all busy. It's the work ethic. It's the work ethic. We work hard. I'm hoping so. she's going to have that as well because a lot of kids these days don't have the no, street. They don't, no. You know. Uh, so. That's awesome. I mean, yeah. So what I want to ask, because like, obviously you are both very busy people in terms of farming life and, you know, it's a physical job and everything you do. So you must, in your downtime, mainly a question for you, Lucy, you must in your downtime just like to sit around, put your feet up, not do anything <laughs> too strenuous, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, what are you alluding to here, Doc? Uh, maybe the <laughs> fact that you are part superwoman, I think. Part superwoman? Just about your, so was it High Rocks? Your, we, so the, now I can be, yeah, farmer? so 2022, I suppose, things started taking a different, I've always been interested in fitness. I've always loved it. More predominantly, maybe a team thing because I've never really had the confidence to be able to be out there by myself. But 2022, um mentally for me and i'm quite a keen advocate of being open about mindset um wasn't a particularly strong one for me so um the farmers weekly do something called brilliant Spitz farmer um and it's about raising awareness of um mental health in farming which can be really um solitary at times um and traditionally a male um uh, orientated industry and men aren't typically men very good at talking are they talking no, um no. so not typically no no not typically but we should um or you guys should um females a little bit better but i wouldn't stay on the whole great talkers sometimes not in that my where i come from anyway my industry my no. um so they have something called British farmer and there are qualifiers now the qualifiers qualifiers have changed a little bit now but um, I took myself up to Oxfordshire. Fortunately, I used to live in Oxfordshire, so I know the area. But Bob didn't know anything about No one knew anything about it um, until I was on the M25, where Bob texted me. Oh, no, he called me and said, where are you? And I said, I'm on the M25. 
He's like, where the hell are you? And so I'm going to brace for his farmer. And I just literally made my mind up that morning. Anyway, he's cut a really, really long story short. I won it. I won oh, my yeah. category. And I was Britain's fittest farmer, female farmer for that year in 2022. What do you mean? Well, I've never got there. I've never got there. It's the most horrific training. Like, pop, pop it up. Always got it on. Let's hang around with it now. Yeah. Um, and then there was this. I followed this lady on Instagram um, and she started doing an event called High Rocks, um, what, which is a worldwide sporting, what's it called? The fitness, World Series of Fitness. World Series series of Fitness Racing. So High Rocks in a nutshell is basically 8K of running, but between every K you go in and do uh, an event. So your first station is a 1K ski erg. Your second station is a um, 50 meters of sled push uh, after your 1k run anyway so on and so forth it can take you as long as you want it can take you as short as you want yeah. and i did it in a partnership three times during the 20 what are we on now 22 23 yeah. season yeah. um and then i was given the push to do it individually this time last year so i went to holland uh, amsterdam in like, november with the hope of secretly getting a podium and i came third yeah. Um. And then went to Italy in February and came second. Um. And then went to Berlin in April and came third and qualified for the World Championships, where I came forty fourth. Um. In the world and ninth in the UK. Um. Which is over cool. the moon. Yeah? And she should rightly be. Yeah. Over the moon, rightly so. Incredibly, Absolutely. Incredibly proud of her. And on the day that she, I'm forty fourth in the world, Bob. And I'm like, that's amazing. The next day, there's 43 people better than me, though. No. And that is the mindset of this lady now that she has got to. Yeah. 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 So I've now gone pro. So I'm in the pro category, which basically means my weights are heavier. Um, and the season's literally just started in the Southern Hemisphere, but they'll start in Europe in September. And we fly to Poland in November for my first competition of 24 25 um but bob's also doing it not with me obviously uh because we'd argue um <laughs> <laughs> I, do as, I do as i'm told <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah it's just but going back to kind of the farming side of things i'm very fortunate that one i've got a, a fully functioning gym here fully functioning which is also the plucking shed which is used for Seven weeks. Seven weeks of the year. So I've got the space. Yeah. Um, but I've also got a gym up the road um, where my coach is based. But for me, it's important that I get off the farm. For me. Um, and just have a little bit of time space. Uh, my time. Where people don't necessarily talk to me about farming. Or don't even know if I'm a, that I'm a farmer's daughter. Or have any association. And that's quite nice. Yeah. Bob doesn't necessarily need that. Um, although you do come to the gym with me um, and do sessions. With zero, otherwise. No. <laughs> um, I, I, do, I do enjoy, don't get me wrong, very physical job, love the yeah. side of it. But again, if you don't take yourself off the farm, you can be guilty of not getting off the farm. So, mm -hmm. you know, so it's... It's taking time out. Yeah, it? it's just taking a bit of time out for us, basically. Which is a very flip good. in the culture of farming, I think, because farmers are 100% into it yeah they've always felt a little bit guilty about going on a farm and having a bit of time for themselves but it's taken a bit dad so much so it's like unbelievably so you know i can't leave the farm of course you can dad of course you can leave the farm the farm will be all right for a couple of hours i'm not saying leave it for you know a weekend um but to go off and then come back you feel refreshed you feel rejuvenated you you've got a new zest it's a bit like yeah. if you're at the, at the butchers all the time, at your shop all the time, it's like yeah, you're, the there. Yeah. you're not seeing things from a different perspective or a different angle. So you, I always say Lucy trains for her mental oh, her yeah. mind more than actually the physical benefit yeah. she gets out of it as well. Yeah. I think yeah. that the, the, the training is for this, isn't it? I said it's to one of my friends the other day, I wasn't so, I've got, I had a couple of tears in my path, so I wasn't supposed to be right. And she said, you're not supposed to be running at the moment. And I said to her, I have, I had to run because I wanted my body to hurt more than my mind. And it was of that mind. And she said, oh, I understand now. And mm -hmm. there are just times where you just think, that that needs to switch off. 
I need to go on a t-shirt, Lucy. That's what that tracks. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My slogan. Um, yeah. Like, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's what I do for rest. But it is rest. Mm. Yeah, it's a break. Yeah. It? It is a rest. It's a, it's a rest from the thought. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Amazing. Mental. Very, very cool. As one, I wanted to ask you one question. I like to try and get opinion of farmers before we go into the last questions is... Your opinions on Clarkson's Farm, good for the farming community or not? Good question. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. He has done more for farming in the three seasons that they've done now. Two seasons? Two seasons. Three. Third third three, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, he, three. he has done more for farming than a BBC programme that's been going for 20 years, without a shadow of a doubt. He has, yeah. he has highlighted what farming is all about. In, a non- in an engaging, humorous, Honest. Yeah. Well, don't get me wrong. You know, when he's sitting there with cheerful child and he goes, "We made a thousand pound on the year." <laughs> that, that is fine. Yeah. yeah. He's very lucky that he's got the Amazon check coming in. To, and he's very open. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, but he said, "If I didn't have that, I where am I?" You know. So no, it's it is brilliant. I was the first series was amazing. Yeah. I was really worried that it would get a bit top gear and a bit staged and a bit uh, which i think some of it probably has because they need to engage with that but he's yeah. not lost that underlying message of how important british agriculture yeah, is, is and and how much we need hot farmers basically i think yeah. it, um minnie our daughter we took her to see caleb when he came to congress theater Cool. And he was a he was, he was absolutely brilliant. He yeah. was phenomenal. Yeah. So I think he at the beginning he said, "Oh, how many people are actually farmers?" And I think it was like less than twenty percent. The whole oh, wow. was farmers. Eighty yeah. percent was people that had bought into farming or were coming to see him because of Clarkson Farm. And he yeah. took it right back to basics. Yeah. What's hay? What's straw? Something that. Of course, we're going to know, but actually, that's really important. We take for granted that we'll automatically know that. But yeah, that's very much so. The general public to understand it. Yeah. I think that's what the program's done as well. It's just brought yeah. it to so many new eyes and yeah. to, to bring the real sort of like topics. It's warts is and all, isn't farming. it? Yeah, in a non patronizing way. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very much so. So, I, I don't think I, we've not spoken to any farmer that said, oh, what a dick. No, if, if anything, they were all worried that because they thought Clarkson was a dick, <laughs> that it wasn't going to be any good. But actually, yeah. they've all actually grown yeah. to like Clarkson as a result of what he's achieved with that program. Yeah. So, yeah, no, very, very good. Mm-hmm. We're very pro it. Yeah. 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 And probably enjoy watching it. Good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the Desh really wants to go to Divi Farms Squad. I am not yeah. queuing up the three. I was going to say, you're looking at like, yeah, three, four hour queue, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some. Right. We've got some guest questions. I hope you've had enough time to think about it. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I have about you have to answer it. No. But you can well, you can you can uh you can confirm the answer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're we're like, so just no some, arguing. Probably up to you guys. Oh my god. Um, it's like um, what is it? Who wants to be a millionaire? Ask the audience. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, are we ready? So the first one is top of the bucket list. Yeah. In what respect? In any, in respect. any respect. Any respect. Top of the bucket list. God, I'm living mine. Yeah, I think to be. <laughs> well, there you go. Really tweet. We we are living it. We just. I suppose top of my bucket list to continue being successful. Yeah, that's a pressure because that's dad pressure. has done. Her dad has done such a phenomenal job mm. of building the business to where we are today. Don't fuck it up. I don't want to <laughs> fuck it up. <laughs> Gee, that pressure. You know, yeah. So to continue yeah, being successful. Brilliant. Yeah. That's a cool yeah. answer. I like that. Yeah. Uh, three people to invite to dinner and why? Dead or alive? Oh, we don't do so. Don't you know, isn't it? <laughs> Sleep. Come on, guys. Um, it will have to, it will have to be in a brunch. Can we do a brunch? Yeah. Um, Give me a brunch. Yeah. Three okay, people to invite to brunch, then there you go. Yeah. Who would you invite? Do you want me to go for one? Yeah. I'll always, I'll always go for my traditional one. Um, I'd invite Ayrton Senna um, because in my youth I was, well, still am, massive F1 fan, um, and he had a, well, and a massive influence upon 
me as uh, the drive, the determination, um, and just F1 in general. So F and Senna for me. For me, that sounds really random. No, that's cool. Oh, I like yeah. it. It's good. I mean, that's a great. Idea. <laughs> he was a quite an outspoken guy as well. One. So yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, do you want me to go again? Yeah, you just. I'll just. I'll just <laughs> add to yours. Clearly, yeah. Uh, I'd invite my dad because I'll ne- I've never had a dull conversation with dad. No, it's very true. Yeah, he's hilarious, and slightly, no, not slightly, really on PC. Uh, yeah, that's a generation thing, but it's also very hilarious. And if then Senna's going to be there, he'd love it. He would love it. Yeah. He'd want Schumacher as well, though, wouldn't he? Yeah, well. Yeah. I don't think we'll get much conversation out of him, sadly. No. Oh, no, and so he's dead. Um, <laughs> you dead or not? He's dead or not? Yeah, he's dead or not, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that. You're not going to do that. Well, you want me to choose another one? Yeah. I can't think of a fierce female that I'd want. It's got to be a fierce female. Oh, yeah. you're not going to know her. Oh, I one. There was a lady that I used to work with, um, and she, again, was, is massive in F1, and she was called Annie Bradshaw. And she, um, as I was growing up, she was PR uh, and marketing at Williams, and I subsequently worked with her, and she is the only female that has matched my father in her drive and her determination, because she worked in F1 when girls were slapped on the arse and had their tits out. Uh, and it really wasn't a place for females to work. So mm. for me, I'd have Annie. She's still in it. And she's still in it. When I think she's it. like, she's got to be early 70s. Phenomenal lady. Yeah, wow. And she always yeah. taught me the adage of never ask someone to do something you're not prepared to do yourself. And I still live by that. If, you, yeah. if you're not willing to do it, why are you going like, to go and ask someone else to do it? So yeah. she was words. There you go. Yeah. Well, Fine. So, <laughs> <done. It's> my <laughs> dinner. Yeah. Party. I'll cook. <laughs> there you go. Good brunch. There you go. Yeah. Um... What, leading on to the next question, death row meal. Go on, you can answer this one then, James. Thank death row meal. Oh, God. So you've got starter, main course, dessert, and a drink of choice. Oh, it's got calamari to start. Love Thanks. calamari. It's got a bit of curry, I think. Are you Tur- not going to say turkey? I was going to say, curry. come on. <laughs> turkey curry. <laughs> Go with the brand. Yeah. Turkey curry. Boxing day, turkey curry. Banoffee pie. Oh, legend. Um, Elite, that is. Off gobbling gold. Yeah, there you go. Nice. Thanks. Very, very good. Yeah. Well, done. well done, babe. Yeah. Okay, that wasn't uh, <laughs> Now, you may have answered, answered this, so you can re, 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 uh, re-say what you said. If you want, where do you see the future of farming going? Uh, 50 for you years, I reckon. Yeah, I spoke to one of my old bosses the other day. He, I used to sell tractors, and he went to a dealer meeting in Germany for Fennet, which is a Trax brand. And I think, did he say to me that oh, yeah. their scent, as in the brand, see UK farming shrinking by 50 to, or there'll be 50 to 60% less farmers in the next five to 10 years in the UK if it continues to go in the same way. On top of what was it is now already. The what it is now. And I thought that wow. was absolutely staggering. I'm pretty yeah, yeah it, was so, it was it was it was like it made me sit back and think, whoa, that's quite but it, I I've always said, even when I was selling the tractors, big farmers are only gonna get big up. So they've got, you know, I've got I've got very lucky to have certain friends that, you know, they farm in excess of two, three, four thousand acres. And if the neighbour, you know, we're only 115 hectares, which is give or take 280 acres, of which we brought 180, 200, depending on the, the, you know, if I suddenly said, well, actually, we won't grow any more arable anymore, ring up that neighbour that does 4,000 acres, dropping my 200 into the 4,000 isn't going to actually really affect him that much, so to speak. It's a bit like if you look at all these dairy farms now, the real players in the dairy market are all milking a thousand cows, aren't they? You know, whereas 50 years yeah. ago, there'd have been five dairy farms locally to yeah. with 50 and they were yeah. making pay, but now they can't make it pay. So it's economies of scale and they're having to scale up so much to, to make it pay. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd like to think businesses such as ours with the diversification that we've got and a niche product, we are a niche product. 
Um, we hopefully will continue to steer the ship and, and still be there. I think some people will get out just because yeah. of the red tape and the parameters surrounding what they're trying to do. Um, it is a worry, though. I do I do think it's a worry. From your perspective, if I can flip it back, where do you see your industry going in the same respect? I think we've the... got a tough few years ahead. Yeah. But I think the ones who aren't evolving with the times will fall away. Yeah. And the ones who are pushing forward, thinking of new ideas, um, providing quality produce, yeah. such as Doug and Middle Farm and so many other butchers, across the country they will stay and if not get stronger i think yeah. there'll be less but it'll be more concentrated yeah, yeah. i think it's the less that there's the, there won't be any high street butchers it'll be farm shops and kind of in garden centers and things like that because yeah there aren't going to be any shops on the high street no, so no, no. Go in. they even but the ones that are still on the high street the reason they're doing well was because again they've diversified like we said and they're now doing online and sort of nationwide deliveries and things like that because that's you know that's what they've had to do to yeah to survive so that's yeah. kind of the way i see it going because hmm. yeah. the local footfall is just not there right so you've got to reach out to people who wouldn't otherwise come to you yes yeah, yeah. So. and give them a reason i suppose yeah yeah, hey, USB. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But watch this space. Here but don't you think, yeah. not necessarily farming, but tree, but in the next few years for the country as a whole, it is going to be a challenge. Is it? Is yeah. Very much so. Yeah. It's going to be in- going to be interesting, to say the least. Yeah. Um, last question. The most important one of the whole podcast: yeah. Are aliens real? Oh, so you've just alluded to your answer then. If you say I'm not not (laughs) I will never ever discount anything until someone proves to me otherwise. It's a good way to see it. Yeah. So yes, do you? So are we saying yes or no? Well, yes, because unless someone proves to me that categorically no. Yeah. Who knows? It's like saying a ghost will. Yeah, I don't know. Very true. I I pretty much say, is that a half yes? Because it's a a yes and a no? Yeah. He'll just do what I say. I'll just... (laughs) (laughs) All right, so we're 100% on that. Cool. 100% yes. Good. Right. It's so brilliant. I'd like to go with them and just experience it. Yeah. If Ant's there, can he turn to come back, please? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 He might be loving life. You don't know. He will be. Oh, be him, yeah, probably. Yeah. 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 They'll be absolutely on it. <laughs> awesome. Guys, this has been an absolute pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. No, thank you. We appreciate well, thank you guys. It's been brilliant. Yeah, we've waffled. Well, we've I've waffled. waffled. Yeah. yeah. That's what this is for. Yeah. No, it's, it's about the waffle. We waffle. It. It's, it's all about the waffle. You know, it's yeah. great. Thank and most so importantly, you've stayed awake, Lucy, for the whole thing. Well done. It's 10.20. Yeah. In 12 yes. hours' time, I would have just come back from the gym. And that's what I'm thinking. It's 10.20. <laughs> I know what I'll be doing in 12 hours' time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I just want to say a couple of things. Um, mental health, it's not just a month. It's all year round. Reach out. Call a friend. Tell me love them. Burnt Chef Project. Go check them out. They'll put you in the right direction and get your bums, boobs and balls checked. Health is also an issue. So get yourself checked out. Yeah. Right. indeed. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Doug, thank you again. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. And we will see you all on the next episode. Cheers guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.